Hi, I'm Kevin, and I'm with the Rescue Wagon, which is our 5x8 custom cargo camper conversion. Say that five times fast. And today we're going to be looking at, I've got a lot of accessories that are on the side of the vehicle. And we got started getting a lot of questions about pe people asking about how does that stuff stay locked up? Well, certain things do lock up, but other parts don't. And it really got me to thinking, you know, I probably can't make it like Fort Knox, but I certainly can make it easy enough that somebody can't just come by and help themselves. All right, so I got a pile of stuff that I'm gonna stick on the outside of this camper, but I need to make sure it's secured so nobody gets it. So we are gonna start putting things on, and one of the things I did was get some of these locks off of Amazon, a pack of eight, and they're pretty good. However, I would prefer the master locks, but I couldn't get eight of them all keyed the same at the time that I was looking. But I will put the link in the description below for these. But then everything else, we're gonna show you how we're gonna secure it to the side of our camper so that it doesn't get stolen. One of the things I dislike besides having the pain of having to unlock everything on the outside is actually having a bunch of keys to have to do it with. Kind of reminds me when I was a kid, the custodian at our school, he had a key ring that was like 46 pounds and probably had 300 keys on it. And uh, keeping track of this and making sure you have it handy when you need your stuff is kind of the problem. But again, we live in a world where people like to help themselves to your stuff. So we're going to secure it so they can't help their stuff to our stuff. One of the reasons I don't love these locks is they tend to get rusty. And I've used a spray lubricant on them before. So what I'm gonna try today is the Advanced Dry Lube PV Blaster with um, Teflon to see if that will help. Because the other lubricants that I've used in the past have not been real successful at keeping it well lubricated. So I'm gonna just kinda let that dry while we're putting the gas can on. So, gas cans go into our holders, strap comes around, pulls down, and we're gonna lock it right here. I'm going to go ahead and spray this one as well. This one's not quite as rusty as the other one, but I'm hoping that this spray will Give me the lubrication I need to keep it, keep it well lubricated. All right, and let that dry as well. Nice thing about that uh, dry lubricant is once it dries, it kind of leaves a little bit of a white residue, but it, uh, it seems to work pretty well for things that you don't want to be greasy. And you might be asking yourself, why do I need 10 gallons of gas attached to the camper? And my answer for that is, uh, when we're at the Outer Banks, we actually use more than this. Uh, about four days worth, we'll use these cans plus one. So we try to fill up the generator before we leave as well. I like to fill these up before we get on the ferry. We try not to travel with them full all the time, one for weight and just another because they're, they're flammable. So we try to get close to the destination we're at before we fill up our tanks. All right, and the nice thing about these gas can holders is they come prepared to um, have a lock added to them. So that makes that easy. And we do have a video that shows you how to install these gas can holders on our channel. One of the things that I cannot lock right now are my traction boards. I've got this handy dandy little lock right here and I'm gonna drill a hole through and see if I can't get this to actually work to hold to secure my boards and keep them locked up. Again, if somebody really wants something, I mean, they can rip it off the side of the camper, but uh, you know, in this particular case, I think it's just where they just can't easily help themselves. So what I'm thinking is, if I put two small holes in here, one where I can fish it through, back through the um, uh, place in the back, then I can actually put the, put the cable through, come back out, and then secure it, drill it through both of them. So 
I think that is going to work. So that is going to work. Now, the lock is not ideal because ideally you shouldn't have to lock your stuff up. Uh, it's kind of sad that you do have to lock your stuff up. But one good, one nice thing about the traction boards, I very, very rarely ever need them. So if I go to take it off, it's not that big a deal. So with our spare tire, uh, you can get different keyed locks. I just happen to have a uh, lug nut from one of my previous Jeep wheels that's got a special key that you use for the side. Again, the stuff we're locking up doesn't make it impossible for people to get it. It just makes it less difficult for them to be able to get it quickly. So I'm just gonna pop off. So the kicker with this is I always have to have this key to get this off. So I've got to leave this inside the door with the other keys for all the locks. I'm going to go put this in the door right now so I don't lose it. Secure. So now we're going to secure our fishing poles. And originally what we did was we bought this off of Amazon, which you can find the link. This was the best price fishing pole holder there was on Amazon. It was really good quality, but it wasn't real deep. So I was worried when we first put this on, which you can watch the video on that installation as well, that we wouldn't be able to hold the tops of the poles. So I was trying to devise a way that we could hold the top. Well, I had this leftover ski rack that we no longer used. So I thought, well, what if we actually put the poles in, secure it, and I can even lock it. Again, somebody can rip the poles out if they really want to. However, it just makes it much more difficult for them to help themselves. So actually, we put, we mounted that in there and it has actually worked very, very well. So as we put our fishing poles in, get them lined up. I break them down in half. You could go all the way to the top, but sometimes there's some low overpasses. I just don't want to break off the top of my fishing pole. Uh, my gear is not expensive gear. This is not, this, these are Walmart fishing poles. I'm not very much of a fisherman. However, I enjoy it and I don't want people uh, stealing my stuff or my stuff getting ruined. So what we do is once I get these up here, and I pull this across, and then as I'm going, I can kind of uh, fish it in so that they're kind of lined up appropriately. And then lock the piece in. Now, once this is locked in place, I just double check to make sure everything's in kind of in good order where it's not going to break. And then I've got a key. Now again, could you push this up, bring it down, maybe pull these open to get it through? Yeah, probably you could. However, I just don't know that it would be um, in your best interest to do so. Okay, so we can also lock this, which makes it nice. Again, is it keeping somebody from absolutely stealing something if they want it? Probably not. However, you can't just come by and help yourself. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to find the right key, first of all. There's this. That's one of the reasons I really don't like locking things up. I have 56 keys. It'd be nice if I had a bunch of these all keyed the same. This is actually um, just a little strip lock, a little strap lock, I guess you could say. It's, um, you find them for gun safety locks, that type of thing. And what it does is just a cable. It goes through. That locks in. For the outdoor shower, uh, these waterproof boxes actually have 
uh, padlock holes in them. For this particular padlock, I had to cut the rubber off of it because the hole on this one is a little bit smaller. So basically, just get to put that in there, lock it in place. And what I'm going to do, because we're going to the Outer Banks, I am going to give this one a little bit of a shot of uh, this Teflon stuff, just to try to keep it from getting corroded. So this is the hot water heater for the outdoor shower. This, in, this is the pump which you can check out the video on the hot water shower. And also there'll be another video coming out soon on the new pump that I put in here. It's the secret pump, it's cool. On this one, I didn't have to cut it back. I was able to uh, fit it through as well. Locking that one. Nice thing about all these, again, these are all keyed the same. So I only have one key for eight locks. Yeah, these are called quick fists. You can actually see the video where I got these to begin with. I'm hoping that this is going to be long enough. There's a little hole in the back that I think I can fit it through. Okay, yep. And... So this is how we're going to secure the shovel. However, I'm trying to decide right now. I only have one of these locks left. I need to get another one. And my axe fits here. So I have to ask myself, what thing do I want the criminal to grab? probably the shovel versus the axe. So I'm gonna see if I can actually secure the axe with one as well. So the last thing I have to hook on the side is the axe. And again, I'm gonna fish this through the hole of the quick fist. And then through the hole, actually, let me see which way is gonna be easier to do this one. It's probably gonna be easier to go through first. And then through the quick fist. And back in. Okay. Okay, so now I have everything all locked up. For more videos like this, click on the video on the screen or go to our channel and click on one of the playlists. You can see everything that we've dealt with today locking up, actually the video for, for putting those on there as well. For links to all of the items used, tools, step-by-step -step instructions, uh, all kinds of good stuff, you can check out our website at www.befreebenson.com. If you found value in this video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help us out. As always, doing things yourself, keeping your goods locked up so the criminals don't get you with your own ax. Uh, stepping outside the box, going to cool places, all of it allows you to be free. We'll see you in the next video.